Hi my friends, I'm Tammy and today we're painting these vintage inspired florals in a vase. I hope you join me. I think we'll have so much fun. So for our composition today, I have my 100% watercolor paper and my number 12 round brush. We're going to go ahead and just get right into it today. So I will be painting these flowers with a cobalt blue paint. We're going to do a little color mix in here because I'm not wanting to do a bright cobalt blue flower. As you can see, I've got a little bit of orange on my brush and I'm adding it in. And the sole purpose of that is to desaturate my blue. Of course, I desaturated so much, so we'll add in some more blue here. And the idea is that orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel. They are complementary colors and they love to look good together next to each other. But when you mix them together, they tone each other down. And that's what I want. Let's take a look. Yep, that's about the shade that I'm looking for today. So adding a little more water to our flowers. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. So with this flower, we're going to do a front facing one first towards, um, well, around the center, obviously. And not all these petals are going to reflect this advice I'm going to give you now. But Basically, you're wanting to make a lot of smaller petals, We're probably going to do six or seven for this flower. And a lot of times the flowers are going to look a lot skinnier towards the center of the flower and get a little bit thicker or wider towards the outside. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm kind of going for today. And I'm using a really light blue because I have a lot of water in my paint and that's purposeful because I want to be able to see the darker paint that I will be using to add details to these flowers when they're dry. Let's do another forward facing one. Now I love painting florals. I love to sketch also before I start my composition. I guess that would mean while I'm starting my composition, um, but I'm not doing that today. And here's the reason why. Uh, the reason is that I want to have a very loose concept. And when I sketch, man, I really get the details right. Um, not all the time, but it really helps my painting to come together. I have everything where I want them to be. And there's kind of no fear in that. There's a bit of control. You know, it allows you to feel like you kind of can conquer um, that painting. It gives you more confidence. You might not be so confident in the painting part of it or getting the details the way you want, but hey, at least you've got that confidence <laughs> um, that things are going to be placed where you wanted them to be. But it also creates more of a tighter painting as well. And maybe doesn't lend itself as much to just kind of being more open in terms of creatively figuring out where things are going to go. That is a side facing, by the way, just four little petals. And we're going to do several of those here. And I, I find you can do all of them forward facing or side facing. I just think it's really beautiful to have a variety um, of those flower perspectives. And this little guy here, also forward facing, but some of those petals are just a little bit short. So maybe he's tilted just a little bit so we can see those petals that are farther away. Well, they appear a little bit longer than the ones in the front. And then we'll do some side facing ones here towards the left and see where we're at. So we're just placing these flowers. I encourage you to try that. It's a very loose style to do. And I was talking about confidence. Confidence is an interesting concept to think about because how often, especially if you're new to watercolor, how often are you feeling confident in your paintings that things are coming together as much or as well as you want them to? And how often and how easily do you lose your confidence in what you're doing when something doesn't go well? Maybe you place a flower in an area that just doesn't look pleasing to your eye. A little bud's up here too. Uh, maybe you drop your paintbrush over composition and there's nothing you can seemingly do to fix that mistake. And maybe, and we're just going to drop in some saturated paint here too. We won't see it so much later because we're going to be doing details over the top, but it is going to give a little bit of variation in the value or the lightness and darkness of these flowers. So it's a great technique, wet on wet, adding in wet paint to wet paint already. It's kind of fun to practice. Okay, I think it's time to, let's see, let's do a little bit more of these blue flowers. And then I think I want to add in uh, some yellow blooms because I know 
yellow and blue will look fabulous together. So I'm going to take my cadmium yellow. We're just going to do little tiny blooms here, five little petals, four little petals. Sometimes you only see three. And we'll add and connect things together with some green stems and leaves and all the things. So just enjoy making those big petals and then making the small ones now and seeing that contrast and how that feels in terms of your um, your muscles working in those fine motor scales. So when we feel confident, we have really great mental thoughts. Um, we feel great. We tell ourselves we're doing well and we're overall pretty happy. We've got that dopamine going in our head, which is making us feel really good about our activity. But what about when we're not feeling confident? What's happening in our brain? What's the story in our head that we're telling ourselves? Just being aware of that is really important. I'm trying to figure out where to put these guys. I think think we'll do just a little bunch over here. And then maybe to the top right. I don't know. Actually, you know what? Let's do the we'll do the bottom right. So we're just we're just working. We're kind of talking about mental health and we're working through our composition and doing all the things at once. This is really healthy to be able to do, especially if you're going through a phase where you're not feeling that confidence in your life. Maybe a relationship has fallen through. You know what? Just a couple up here. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> um, maybe work is really hard. Maybe you're going through health issues and really struggling. And those life events really have a way of zapping our energy, don't they? And taking away that confidence that we maybe used to have in ourselves and the self-esteem that we experienced, if it was good, it sometimes even crumbles. I'm adding in our sap green here. We're just going to add in some little stems. And then I'm going to go back and poke in some more color at the base where the stem meets the flower because we want to add that little detail. The water isn't so wet. The paint isn't so wet here. So the paint will, this new paint won't spread as much as if we had done it right when we had first laid down the flowers because it's dried up a little bit. So anyway, my encouragement to you is if you're experiencing some of the things I've mentioned um, and I'm taking my liner here, my liner is my kind of my, my little buddy because I'm going to take that to connect my little yellow flowers together. Uh, but I encourage you to really be aware of the thoughts. Your thoughts are powerful and simply changing your thought to something more rational can automatically change how you're feeling in that moment, give you more strength and confidence to get through what you're going through. It may not take away what's happening because it we can't always change you know, what's happened to us or what is happening. We can't always change that. I'll oft, oftentimes, things are out of our control. But what we can do is change how we are viewing what is happening to us. And so even if you're having weak moments, being able to remind yourself it's okay, this is normal, this is natural, happens to many people. We're going to get back on that confidence horse soon. Uh, but right now, it's okay to struggle and remind yourself that, you know, each day is new and it's a gift and there are new ways to wake up and imagine what your day is going to be like. And simply waking up with a song in your heart and an excitement. Right here, I'll add a little bit more of the blue flowers, just a couple to elongate. And it, I think that'll look pretty in terms of giving interest to this painting. So a song in your heart and a prayer in your mind. And just being grateful for being able to wake up another day can really turn around your confidence level and your anticipation for what the day will hold. All right, so anyway, just a little encouragement on that. And I do want to say, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, remember to like it, please, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that little notification bell so that you know when I'm going live and I'm posting videos. And now we're going to use our number six round brush, mixing up some really watery paint and I'm going to start adding in our vase. I want it to be really light. I want it to be kind of squarish with maybe a little bit of rounded edges there. But I want it to be light enough that we can add in some watercolor details when it's dry. And I think that'll be um, really pretty and kind of fancy. And guys, again, um, if you have any thoughts, please leave them in the comments. I'm curious to know what's your favorite part so far with this floral composition 
and maybe what's one thing that helps you feel confident in your life when you're experiencing a low in that area. So I'm just taking a little more saturated paint and just kind of drawing in almost those edges, keeping it really light in the center. And I'm doing that on purpose. Sometimes I tend to go really dark with a vase and then you just don't have a lot of room to be able to put uh, any design on it. So I'm thinking spring, guys, clearly. It's been cold for so long. Let's add in, oh, that didn't really show up. Let's add in a little more saturated paint. As you see, I just dipped straight up into my purple paint because I want to have that really show up. And so I'm just marking that left side. Maybe there's some more shadow there. Take my clean brush and just blend out the edges. And again, if I didn't mention it before, I am using a 100% cotton paper. The watercolor just really loves cotton paper. It moves well with it. If you have a cheaper paper, it may not blend in the same way or not hold up as well or as confidently <laughs> um, to all the water you're using, but it's okay. It's still good for practice and you use what you have. I've even had people practice on cardboard because that's all they could afford at that moment, but it was a space to practice. I know a lot of watercolor artists swear by cotton paper and really encourage people to not use anything else, but I can't, I can't do that just because everyone's on a budget and we need to be able to use what we can afford. Um, and if you can't afford expensive paper, you're not going to paint. And the point is to paint <laughs> and to just express yourself. Uh, right now I've got that saturated paint. I'm just going around and darkening up the centers of the flower, like on the outside of the centers, as well as I'm outlining the edges or the outer edges of the petals, just to help them stand out and differentiate between them. It's going to make them pop and stand out and look really beautiful. And I think this is what, at least the coloring here, is what gives these flowers a really nice vintage look. So more about that. I, I believe in budget-friendly materials. I started out with watercolor, the cheapest of cheap papers. I didn't even use watercolor paper at first. I had a mixed-media journal and all the things and slowly worked my way up to getting uh, supplies that was uh, more of more quality. And if that's what you have to do, if you're on a budget, I just prefer that you practice and that your heart can find that joy. Sure, it's a lot more rewarding, and your paintings do, do tend to come out better when you have quality supplies, but are you fearful of using those supplies because you don't want to waste or you just don't have the money to afford it in the first place? If you don't, just buy what you can afford. I've heard that the dollar store has decent supplies for being a dollar store, just something to check out. Um, don't let a budget stop you from expressing yourself through art. It is so healing and so therapeutic. And then as your budget allows, save up by one extra quality thing at a time. Ask for it for Christmas, all the things. It's okay. Do what you can and use what you have. And it makes me smile to know every time I hear one of you guys starting out and like this is the first time you've been painting and you're finding joy from it. it makes my heart so happy. It makes all this worth it. All right, now we're going to do our details for our lovely vase. So I'm mixing up some more purple here on my palette, a little bit more saturated color, and we're just going to do some little blooms. Let's do five petals, similar to what we did with the yellow blooms in our vase. And I love making tiny little flowers like that. I think they're just so cute. So, you know, don't be too worried about it. And I have to remind you, I haven't asked you, are you feeling any body tension today while you're painting? If you are, here's the chance for you to take that deep breath, relax your shoulders that might be all the way up to your ears by now, relax your stomach, relax your back, relax your body, because this is supposed to be a fun and beautiful experience. And if you're feeling that tension, that means somewhere your brain is telling you that this is something to be worried about or fearful. Let's see. So adding in our little blooms. And, you know, let's not worry about symmetry. Random is great. I sort of put them, you know, spaced apart. But that doesn't really matter. Just putting the marks down on paper, that's what matters. Having a good time. 
I'm doing some little leaves here, just a tiny little leaf with a stem and just adding those in between the blooms. You know, I did say I have spring on my mind, guys. I cannot help it. Winter is long, but we will see the spring coming up where, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there little by little. So adding in those leaves and yeah, I think that's about it. Eventually we'll add some centers to those flowers. So cute. A little bit of some spots here as well. So when we're working on this, you know, this is something that it takes time, but that's okay. I realize I didn't put in my liner details for some of these smaller blooms. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just a little bit of stem action over here for these guys. Guys, you've probably heard me say it already, but I teach watercolor on Patreon, so I always like to remind you I'm over there for as low as $2.50 a month. You can get exclusive tutorials not seen anywhere else, and in other levels, of course, there's other things like art prints, live stream, um, self-care worksheets, and I even added in a mental health art workshop that is now available as its own tier, and it includes all the benefits of the other levels as well. Check it out. We have so much fun over there. Link is in the description, and I'm so glad you're here on YouTube. Um, I have so much fun over here also. All right, adding in a little bit of our green details, just some marks. Just put, put some little scraggly marks on your paper, and I'm not even adding, you know, leaf shapes. That's not the whole point of this right now. The whole point of this is to just fill in our vase with gorgeous, lovely colors. And, you know, we've got our blooms on there. I could have added in some more blue, you know, where the yellow flowers are, but I, I chose to add in some of that filler. I think that can be kind of fun to just utilize that. And then I like the contrasting color of the yellow with the blue. Okay, now we're adding some pretty saturated black to our little yellow bloom since it's all dry and it just makes them look so cute like it's a little eye in the middle of the flower and we'll do some of those centers with our with our vase details as well i hope you guys are having fun if you have any ideas for future compositions you'd like to see me do leave that in the comments at this point let me know i love hearing from you guys i love hearing your feedback and curious what you thought about this uh, vase composition and if you're going to try it. Finally, I think we've, well, we've got a few things to do, but first and foremost, we're going to do some yellow. I'm dipping into my lemon yellow. I'm not sure if that's going to be what I want. Nope. Let's do some cadmium here. So we're just going to do some line marks. I've got my number six round, so pretty large brush, and we're going to add that in. And then after it's dry, we're going to add in some darker marks too. So we're just going to give these little flowers the full treatment. You could leave the center white or you could stipple in some brown within the white. That would be really cute too. I love the yellow. Still, obviously, contrasting with that blue is really sharp. And now I'm going to take some brown here and let's stipple in right in the center of that flower while it's wet. It's going to spread just a little bit, but look, I'm not using much water on my brush. If you noticed, I was dipping straight into that paint. I think I even did brown and then I did black. And so if it's saturated paint, it's not going to spread much at all because there isn't water that's going to allow it to move. All right, a little bit of our centers here for the purple flowers too. Guys, we are so close to being done. I'm so glad that you've stuck with me so far. And I really hope that you enjoyed this project. I am doing some splatter. Just that same blue paint. Guys, splatter is so pretty, isn't it? Just tapping your brush. Some people will br uh, tap two brushes together. I just prefer to tap it with my, with my hand, and that works for me. Finally, let's do a bit of a shadow. So I've got that same blue paint. You know what? Why reinvent the wheel? Not even doing gray. Gray shadows are so boring. And if you look at shadows in real life, you'll see there's a lot of colors. Do a little bit darker here, right at the base, where it might be the darkest, and right behind the floral bunch. And yeah, shadows come in all types of colors, especially if there is a shadow um, that has some an object reflecting color in it. And a cast shadow, for example, like this. This would be a cast shadow. And so now I'm just spreading that out. 
it's time to take our liner brush. We're gonna dip into our dark paint. You can do black or brown. I'm gonna choose to do black here. And now that my flowers are totally dry, we are going to take the dark paint and just make some really pretty marks in the center of our flower, which is really gonna contrast uh, from that yellow and stand out really nicely. So all these little marks, you know, we're not being too detailed or careful about it in terms of how long will each mark be, just putting those marks on the paper. Don't worry about how far apart they need to be spaced. This is a class here on how not to be stressed and how to have fun and to find the excitement and appreciate all this stuff. I don't want you guys to stress over these little things. If you see any white spaces, fill them in with just blobbing in some paint. Look at how simple that is. I'm not doing leaf shapes. Your eye will fill in the details. If the flower shape or the leaf shape is not there, it will be um, known what this is. The message will be received. Um, just adding in a few more details just to fill out this lovely little composition here. This, if you did it at a smaller level, could make a really cool greeting card or you can do one this big and give it away as a Easter gift or a Mother's Day gift. Just saying. That is around the corner. Sooner than we think, it will be here. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you on the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.